This Sylvania flat screen TV has been sitting in storage for several months now, waiting for a chance for me to fix it. And now that chance has come. This thing is from, I believe, 2008. As you can see, it's quite thick and it weighs a ton. Got a few different circuit boards in here. The main power supply, which also houses the backlight inverters. A secondary power supply for providing the low voltage rails to the DVD player and the image and sound processor. I uh, believe this also has the audio amplifiers on it. And on the far left, a set of inputs. Though there's also inputs directly onto the processor board. On the main board, a switching power supply feeds six individual cold cathode backlight circuits from a pair of 4700 microfarad 35 volt caps. The secondary power supply has its own filter cap and switching circuit fed from the DC rail after the main rectifier. We have a 15 volt rail, a 3.3 volt rail, and a 5 volt rail. Despite what should be an adequate amount of ventilation slots and airspace, this unit runs very hot. There's visible discoloration around the legs of these resistors, and especially up among these diodes. The second power supply is a bit better off. It doesn't have any discoloration, but there's still some hot spots, especially on this transformer. In addition, all of the waste heat that's rising off the second power supply gets trapped behind the shield and begins to roast the main processor board. A quick rummage through my parts bin turned up a pair of Martech brand computer fans. 0.18 amps at 12 volts DC. They're not very powerful, but they're not very loud either. So I'm thinking these could be a perfect candidate for keeping that TV a bit cooler. I need a good point in the power supply that can provide switched power to the fans so they only run when the TV is turned on and not in standby. I believe I've found an ideal spot right at this diode here where the red alligator lead is. When the TV is in standby, that is a 5 volt rail. With the two fans in series, the 2.5 volts won't be able to make them start. If I turn on the TV, like so, that 5 volt rail becomes a 16 volt rail. 8 volts across each fan, and they should run quiet but move more than enough air to keep this thing cool. With the TV in standby mode and the fans connected to the 5 volt rail that becomes 16 volts when the TV is on, the fans only draw about 3 quarters of 1 milliamp. With the TV powered up and the fans running, they pull just slightly less than 100 milliamps. After some experimentation with the age-old duct tape prototype technique, I found a decent location for both of the fans. One here to direct air over this power supply board, including the vulnerable inverter transformers, and this fan to direct air over the second power supply and the processor board. Now that I know where to put the fans, time to make this TV so much less of a pain in the butt to work with. The stand is attached to the frame with two screws on each side. However, take a look at how the back of the case is set up. When the back is on the TV, the stand sticks out through this low, wide U-shaped slot. This means that I can't put the back on or take it off while the stand is attached to the TV. I think you can see how annoying this gets after a few tries. There, that's better. Quick application of a saw and a file, and this piece is now detached. The back of the TV should now slide on and off without having to remove the stand. Now that I got the back on, plotted out about where the fans are going to go. One here for the main power supply, and one here for the second power supply and the processor board. Out of curiosity, before I cut the holes in the back and install the fans, I wanted to see how warm the TV would get with the back casing installed. Until now, I've mostly been running it without the back on so I can probe around, check voltages and temperatures. So, 
here it is with the back on it's been idling for about an hour let's see how warm it got top of the case on the outside was about upper 30s to around 40 celsius have a look at the main power supply inverter transformers 50.7 50, 48, 50, 47, 41. So getting cooler as it goes towards the bottom, not too bad. These resistors that were having some scorching around their bases, 109.8 Celsius. Those are getting a bit too warm. Here by the heat sink, yeah, upper 40s, low 50s. Transformer, 65, this rectifier on the secondary side, uh, upper 70s, 78, 79. Electrolytics, uh, 60, 50s to 60s. Secondary power supply, uh, looking like between 30s to, 30s to mid 50s, no real hot spot trouble here or scorching. The logic board, uh, 53, 51, 44, somewhere around there. Yeah, this thing gets a bit too warm with the casing on. I think the fans are a good idea. I'll have to do some cleaning up around the edges here, but fans are temporarily wired up for a quick test. Just shut it down, took the back off, and quickly measured the temperatures. The inverter transformers here ranged from mid-30s to low-40s up at the top. Switching transformer was mid-40s. These resistors, which were boiling hot before, are now mid-40s, as are the diodes, which are also getting a bit too hot. Electrolytics will be a lot happier. Over here on the second power supply, nothing warmer than mid-30s, and same thing on the logic board up here. The fans work great, but there's one not-so-tiny problem that needs to be addressed. Noise. Got the fans out of the TV using a 12 volt battery to isolate the problem, make sure it's not the TV's power supply causing the noise. Here we go. It's really quiet, I'm not sure if the camera can hear it. Here's a quick experiment. Put a 47 microfarad capacitor in parallel with each fan. Let's see how loud they are now. Still a bit of noise, but significantly quieter. The capacitors, plus a bit of mechanical damping between the fan and the case in the form of some paper, seems to have taken care of most of the noise. At this point, it should be almost unnoticeable when the TV's turned on. Got the little 47 microfarad capacitor soldered directly onto each fan. A piece of hardware cloth with some fiberglass window screen over it will protect the fan blades from any debris and keep the larger pieces of dust out. To make it easier to remove the back from the TV for any further repairs or maintenance, I built this quick little connector to supply power to the fans. Both of these little plugs originally came with the fans. I've just rewired and repurposed them by inserting a pair of wires into one, holding them down with hot glue, and then that now plugs into the other. Line up the black stripes, and there you are. It's not good for lots of plug-unplug cycles or high current, but it will face neither of those in this application. Because the TV grounds the negative side of the power supply to the chassis, I just used the spade terminal, clamped it with this screw, and there's the ground for the fans.
soldered the positive wire for the fans right there to the top side on the diode for the 16 volt rail. This runs up along the side of the board, zip tied there, and up to the connector at the top of the TV. There we are, TV is all put back together, fans are clamped on, got little silicone pads under the corners for noise isolation, tape around them so the air goes mostly inside the TV, and I've selectively blocked some of these lower vents so more of the air goes up. Contact. As you see, fires right up and done. TV works. The built-in DVD player isn't working on this TV. It's having trouble reading discs, so that shall be a future repair video subject. For now, I'm using the PS2 as a signal source and the same Ancient Roman Empire documentary as the DVD. Hit play. Sound is off, so I don't get any copyright issues, but as you can see, it works. Nice picture, plenty bright, and the fans are essentially silent.